Welcome, everybody. Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Peter Jonas, who is going to tell us about OpenScore. Have fun. Okay. Hi, everyone. So I'm going to be talking about OpenScore, which is a collaborative project between MuseScore and IMSLP. And we want to open source music using open source software. What do we mean by open source music? Well, we want to liberate the music from copyright restrictions so everyone can do what they want with it. And we also want to liberate it from paper. We want digital music. You basically, if you think of what OpenStreetMap did for maps and Project Gutenberg did for books, we want to do the same for sheet music. So how would you go about doing that? Well, it's a two-step process. You start from the original score, and then you have, to get it, you have to get it onto a computer somehow. So we need to uh, scan it and convert it into a bitmap image. Uh, but it doesn't end there, because the next step is we want to turn it into a semantic score, something that we can uh, play and extract data from. And the end result is that we'll get the actual musical source code in an XML format, uh, which is editable and passable. And then we're going to release it under a Creative Commons license, so everyone is able to do whatever they want with it. And so this would allow you to uh, listen to the music, edit it, and share it. And I've got a quick demo of that. So here we have some sheet music uh, within MuseScore, uh, which is a open source music notation editor. So you can listen to the music, and you can edit it. And then you can share it with the world in uh, a variety of different formats. So uh, yeah, so that's so the, the sheet music is very much a, a living beast once you get it onto the computer. Uh, so to cover step one, getting it uh, in uh, scanning the music, we're, this is where we're partnering with IMSLP. Uh, so they have uh, a, it's a a vast community of users who are uploading uh, scanned copies of sheet music that they find around the world in libraries and private collections. So this is old editions that are no longer in copyright. Uh, so uh, this is the sort of thing you'd expect uh, if you uh, on IMSLP. So we have Tchaikovsky's Sixth Symphony here. Uh, so you can see all the variety of different formats it's available to, uh, to download in. But what you get out of this is a, a PDF file. So just a, a series of uh, pictures of pages. So it's quite static. Uh, it's, not, it's not living like the, the XML music is. So then the next step is uh, MuseScore. And this is where MuseScore's community comes in. So MuseScore is an open source new, uh, music notation program under GPL version 2. Uh, but it's also a, a community of sheet music creators who use the software uh, to create their own original compositions or to transcribe um, existing pieces. And then they upload that to musical.com and share it with the world. So uh, starting from this uh, bitmap score, the PDF file, uh, this is how you'd go about entering the notes into MuseScore. So it's a very long and tedious process for one person to do it on their own. but by uh, outsourcing it to a bunch of uh, to many uh, individuals, we can go from uh, just a few notes to a whole score. And you see what we've done here is we've added a a nice cover to it for the the open score edition. So this is that uh, Tchaikovsky that I showed you a, a minute ago in the the PDF file that's been uh, added. Uh, uh, typed up by MuseScore's users, and we sent this out to a whole bunch of them. We gave them two pages to do each, and uh, after a week, we got back this whole um, symphony. And once you've got it into MuseScore and you have this XML, you can then output it in a variety of different formats. So you can see them uh, here. So there's the main uh, music XML for sharing with other notation software. But then, of course, you can output in a number of different uh, image, uh, audio, and video formats as well. 
And then, uh, because we release under a Creative Commons license, this gives you the freedom to do whatever you want with the file, uh, as long as you credit that you got it from OpenScore. So how are we, how is this going to happen? Uh, so we really want to, to kickstart this and to incentivize MuseScore's users to, to get out there and start transcribing uh, these pieces to get them into the digital formats. And the way that we're going to do that is uh, we're going to incentivize them with free membership of the MuseScore.com website, which allows them to share as many scores as they like. And in order to, to fund this and provide these rewards and incentives, we'll be running a Kickstarter. Um, and so the money from the Kickstarter will go towards uh, incentivizing the crowdsourcing effort. So what will happen with the Kickstarter is that the backers will select the pieces to transcribe, and then we will hand them out to MuseScore's users to produce the transcriptions, and then we will check those transcriptions to make sure that they match the originals and, uh, and provide uh, an exact semantic uh, copy of the original music. So if you say, if you go onto the musical.com and you're looking for the uh, uh, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, then you'll know that that's exactly what you're getting. There's no, um, no uh, edits, no... Uh, uh, you're, you're getting the exact original. And there's a whole number of different use cases that we uh, in, envision that people will, will want to use these scores for, and we're partnering with these other organizations to make these happen. Uh, so you can see uh, some of them there, and I'll talk about some of these uh, different use cases. So the number one is accessibility. So you can see... Um, so if, if somebody's partially sighted and they're trying to read sheet music, then at the moment uh, there's, you, they have to use some kind of magnification technique, but we can do better than that. Uh, so once you have the semantic score, you are able to, to enlarge it, to change the fonts, uh, and make something called modified stave notation. Uh, or you can color different notes for uh, people with reading disabilities, like dyslexia. And we can even output Braille as well for blind musicians. And of course, uh, once you have the digital file, you're able to enjoy the music on a range of different devices and uh, publish it on various different platforms. So one of the uh, more interesting uses that's happening at the moment is um, some students at the University of St. Andrews are using MuseScore to uh, produce translations of French operas. They're translating them into English. And when you have the digital file in MuseScore, it allows you to write the, trans the lyric translation straight underneath the original language. And then uh, the students can share their uh, translations with each other. They don't have to worry about um, copyright issues from photocopying music, that kind of thing. Or you can use these files as a research tool. So if you pair it with the open source Music 21 toolkit, then you can uh, extract information from the score, sort of uh, how many notes of each different kind are there, or what, what key signatures did the composer use. And then, thanks to the Creative Commons license, researchers can publish their results under any license of their choosing. And once we have these uh, digital scores, we'll be able to feed them into um, artificial intelligence uh, machine learning algorithms to try and uh, teach computers how to uh, create music. So um, you might have heard of these uh, projects where uh, they teach the computer uh, how Bach would, uh, this sort of Bach style of uh, composition, and then the computer can output another piece uh, that was uh, not made from any of Bach's pieces, but is uh, in Bach's style. So machine learning, that kind of thing. And the other thing you can do is you can create these artistic visualizations from the sheet music. So uh, this is made by another of our partners. And uh, this is a visualization of uh, the four seasons. And if you start at the top and you read it clockwise, uh, that tells you um, the, where you are within the piece. And the, each dot represents a note in the score. The size of the dot is the volume and its distance from the... Uh, the center of the circle is its pitch. So that's a visual representation of a, of a score. And the colors tells you which instruments were used. 
so there's various other uses as well, like um, uh, video games. So you can imagine sort of uh, playing uh, along with a score or remixing the content. And uh, one of the, uh, the, the ultimate goal is to have, uh, to be able to uh, give the most enriched experience with the music as possible. So to use the, um, the, the music, uh, the, the sheet music to, uh, to enrich uh, other media such as uh, videos, that kind of thing. So I have uh, a demonstration of that over here. So this is um, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony that the, has, we've made a, an open score edition. So you can see we've given it a cover page made by the, the visual artist. And then uh, we've synchronized this with a YouTube video using uh, open source software. So if you're ever curious as to what uh, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony actually looked like, then uh, now you know. So now uh, that's the presentation, so now we'll take questions. Thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, if there are any questions, please raise your hand and I'll get the mic to you. How soon will you be accepting volunteers for MuseScore uh, uh, for OpenScore uh, transcribing? So we're currently running a pilot project um, to transcribe the Tchaikovsky piece, and uh, we've just put out a notice on the MuseScore website. So uh, you'll be able to sign up using this link uh, to register your interest, and we should be ready to start going within uh, a month or so. Yeah. Uh, concerning compatibility, you've mentioned Music XML, but did not mention the Music Encoding Initiative, for example. Is there a reason for that? The Music Encoding Initiative? Initiative, okay. yeah. It's another standard for, for XML. Uh, I'm, I'm not familiar with that, I'm afraid. Um, but we're going for open uh, as many formats as possible, and uh, as, assuming that you're... Uh, use case can import music XML, then uh, it will be compatible with that. Sorry. Uh, but we can uh, export MIDI um, and yeah, a whole a whole variety of different formats. Um, I have two related questions. First of all, you're you're licensing under um, cre uh, General Creative Commons. What was the rationale behind not either asking for at for attribution, which to many composers would be important, they're happy to give it away, but they would like to know that they composed it. And secondly, um, share alike, to ensure other people behave in the same way. And then related to that, if you described what seemed a very centralised process. What if someone comes up and says, I've actually happened to have done a complete transcription of some piece of music. Are you set up to take uh, contributions, even if they weren't the ones you originally asked for? Uh, yes, so we will, where we find um, existing compositions that are either um, under an, a compatible license or the, the person is willing to, to license them to us under a suitable license, then we are happy to use those. Um, and uh, why did we choose the uh, Creative Commons attribution license rather than share alike? Um, we, we wanted to be as, as open as possible, uh, I guess. Uh, is the reason for that. Um, and it's, it's something that we uh, are still considering, but we but basically we wanted it to be as open as possible. So the, the file, you can already get the PDF files are all already available under uh, completely open licenses, and uh, we don't want to restrict other people, um, artists and so on, from uh, monetizing the things that they create using OpenScore. Yes. 
Um, are you building tools for melody recognition too? Now you have all those source files. Uh, for image recognition, was that? Melody recognition. Melody recognition. Yes. Um, so you heard of the Music 21 toolkit that does, uh, uh, you can extract various information using that. Uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, familiar with melody recognition. Um, there is, uh, there also there is the, the tool that we use to synchronize the, uh, the scores with the videos that uh, does, um, it matches the, uh, the two different sound sources together, uh, yeah. So I think this is time for one more question. Anybody? Yeah. Is this typing in of uh, music score not a lot of work? Isn't it easier to do something like OCR or something? OK, so there are tools that can uh, do an automatic conversion, but they're currently not reliable enough, at least not the open source ones. Uh, so we want to, uh, we're going to type this in uh, manually. But what that will do is it will give us a set of PDFs and the matching XML scores, and then we can use that to train artificial intelligence to make the, con the, uh, the automatic conversion process more reliable in the future. So thank you very much. Thank you.